time. Amen, amen. I think we're live. Well, welcome to From Inside Ministry. My name is Minister Hugh Braxton. I want to welcome live stream uh, into the house with us. Um, we're From Inside Our Ministries. We're meeting in the home right now. Until later on, we'll be, back, be able to meet back into the school when they open it up back up for more people again. Praise God. Tonight, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go ahead, hit share. I want you to start a watch party, invite other people out to this message, because I got a message that's really going to help you uh, increase your faith, stop your doubt, launch you into the future. Besides all the stuff that's going on tonight, God has given me a word tonight that I know is going to bless your socks off. So stay tuned. Come on in with us. It's, it's what is it? November the 4th? Amen. Amen 2020. And I know people want this year to be over, but remember when you with God, time ago, I, I lost my connection for a minute. Praise God. Praise God. We're online. <laughs> Praise God. You got me. There you go. Yeah, I connected for a minute. Praise God. So go ahead and put eternity in our hearts. And now we're going to go ahead and check out. Let's check this out. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalms 33 and 12 says this. God says, Our nation is blessed because we have made God our Lord. How do we do that? Because people are like, Every nation got bad guys. murder, killing, stealing, evil. Uh, all kinds of stuff behind the scenes. And I said, well, how could a nation be blessed? If all the nations are like that. Well, what made America great? People always trying to say what made America great, but they really don't know what made. What made America great is America did something that most nations have not done. They took the Bible and wrote our Constitution and wrote the laws of this country based on the Word of God. That's what made America great. You know what they did? They did South Carolina Prince where it says, Blessed is the nation who God is law. So when you have laws, the laws constitute your culture. And as long as you and what you're saying, when you make a law and you start changing the laws, that mean your culture is changing. So if your laws line up with God's culture, God says, blessed is the nation the laws of God. God is their law. So that's what we did. Now here we are after the election. People thought like, man, I can't wait for this to be over. <laughs> it's a day of the election. And, but we've been talking about this forever. We knew one day it's not going to get people down off their walls about what they're trying to do. I put something on Facebook and I'm going to read to you for those who did not visit my Facebook earlier. And I wrote this. And I think it's, it goes hand in hand because God has given me something. Because I went to prayer after the real elections because I wanted to be coming. That recording went off. Stop persecuting me. Praise the Lord. But like I said, Will you feel abandoned by God if you're a person don't win? Will you feel angry? Furthermore, here's a tough one. Will you see the winner as a person God has set in place and on a position, or will you declare, not my president? We've heard that a lot, right? <laughs> People are funny. Our response in these seasons where God does not seem to come through are critical moments in the development of our faith. That's my key thing. When you see the stuff going on, well, where's your faith at? How are you developing this? Are you getting mad at God about because you got somebody? This is not a football game. This is not your best team. <laughs> you know, this is life. As they say, this is your life. It's not one to come. This is the life that we're living. And we're going to see throughout the message today how important it is for us to start learning, discerning the times that we live in. We can't go back and say, oh, you remember back in Georgia, Washington Day? This is our day, you know? This is the day that the Lord has made. So watch this. Have faith. We cannot see the why or the reason. You got to have faith when you can't see. I don't know why. I don't even know the reason. We know who got it off and who don't. You know, this, like I said, it's not a football game. It may seem like the very trajectory of our nation hangs in the balance. To us. But then we think God then. Now he was like, oh my God. If this one get in office, it's all over. And Lord, heaven forbid, if this one get in office, it's all over. See, it might seem like that to us. My point is, as believers, I got a whole nother source. What does it look like to God? It might be more than this plan. See what I'm saying? Watch this. But as believers, we must never lose sight of the fact that it is God who determines our trajectory. Not an election. His purpose are never hanging in the balance. God has a purpose. He says, I'm never hanging in the balance. I'm not losing sleep. I'm not taking no pills. I can't sleep. I ain't got to exaggerate over it. See, we're supposed to have to let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. See, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ. Say, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. See? So the mind of Christ, it says a, a peace 
you know, and anxiety. So if, if you already felt this week and throughout this month, all this year, I mean, we had COVID, come on. We had to get songs like the one going, get our faith going. Then we had an election, and then people get you caught up in the election. Concerned, but not caught up. <laughs> Concerned, but not caught up. Not to the point where you start losing friendships, anxiety. This is crazy to me. Not for believers. Like, believe, now you know better than that. Really? <laughs> It doesn't matter. Everybody has an opinion. That's all it is. Everybody think they know. But nothing, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna ask you one question. What do you think God thinks? That's it. All opinions, mine, even mine, included, stops. As soon as I tap into the spirit, I say, what do you think God thinks? I'm just sit back and let him do his thing. I like uh, that meme I put out. It said, uh, watching for the results of elections is like you doing a uh, big college project and you just wondering <laughs> if uh, I know I did my part, I just wonder if everybody else messed up. <laughs> human. That's the way it felt. <laughs> I remember the Black Belt Project, that's the way you felt. This big, massive project. Like, okay, here's my part, here's my part, here's my part. <laughs> like, did you guys mess it up? We're waiting on that grade. <laughs> well, America's being degraded right now. God always going to give you the king that you deserve. Now, not the one that he wants you to have, like Saul versus David. He's going to give you the king that you deserve. You know, so either that king will bring you blessings or that king will bring you curses. There's only blessings and curses in God's life. You know, we play games with, you know, oh, it's just this. No, 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 it's a curse. It's time for us to recognize when you're being blessed and when you're being cursed. Because that's the only thing God's going to do. We do the same thing with sin. I have a problem. No, God says it is a, it's a sin or it's not. It's righteousness. <laughs> See? Because that's how he's going to measure and that's how he can get you out of stuff. But if you play games... And pretend that your problems are not a sin. Remember, Jesus came to die for who? What? Our sin is not our problems. <laughs> okay? So you either sin or you don't. So he can take care of the sin problem. But you start talking about problems alone without making it sin? Mm -mm. Now watch this. God's will is sovereign and his, his plans don't always match up to ours. Neither do the people he chooses to place in seats of authority. We need to pick our parents. <laughs> you didn't get to pick uh, what teacher you're going to have for certain grades. I remember that. Like, oh, we tried to in college that you do it. I'll wait next semester. <laughs> you know, we tried to. But eventually, <laughs> they usually in that circle, they're going to get you. <laughs> you try to avoid all you want. You don't get to pick. You need to learn to submit. That's all it is. You know, you're trying to bypass certain things. I don't want that one. Well, maybe you need that. Because God says, I'm going to show you how to operate what you think is good. And what you think you're bad, and you're not gonna lose anything in the period. I'm just telling you, that's the way. As believers, this is a different life for us. As believers, his, his will is sovereign. He chooses to place the seats in authority. I say, may God give America the president he deserves this time. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. May God, well, may we get the president we deserve. We didn't have him before, trust me, I know. And I know it wasn't a blessing. Some people think it is, <laughs> you know. To some it might be, and some people not. But the whole point is, God does not hang our trajectory, meaning our progress in our life, based on any human flesh or any human balance. So don't be losing it. I mean, I just see people split up relationships over this stuff. That's crazy. You're going to need those relationships. <laughs> and that president going to be gone. Ain't even thinking about you. <laughs> you know? You know, so what you need to be doing is time to not curse. Because, in a good way, by dropping some F-bombs called forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness, forgiveness. Drop some F-bombs all over the place. You would tear all the negative media, all the hate. God says, you never return evil for evil. But how do you get rid of evil? He'll say this way, he says, return evil for good. But what he's telling you, this is how you get rid of evil. Do good. Do good. This is how you do good. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us or who or does sins against us. God says, forgive us. You must forgive for God to forgive you. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about this future, your future. Because everybody's concerned about the future. That's probably why they get up uproar. Some of them just got caught up in drama. And you know, I think America is full of drama. I mean, I think I see, I mean, we were full of reality TV. All they like is drama. You know, like you go and ask somebody, what are you doing? Why are you doing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Everybody else is the drama. You just got caught up in it. You know? So the, the future 
for a believer. Watch this. The future is fearless for those who believe. The future is fearless for those who believe. Now, you see how I put that those who believe. It's not fearless for everyone. It's for those who believe. Matter of fact, while I got you here, teach a moment. I noticed that God showed me this difference because I'm always trying to find out why people are not hungry for God, why they're not seeking. These are believers. Remember, we got one category. The minimum requirement because all they're concerned about and they think that's God's end game is all I do is get saved and believe Jesus Christ that one day I might go to heaven. That's not God's end game. He saved you for something else. Going to heaven is a byproduct of what he saved you to do. We're going to talk about it a little, a little bit tonight about your fearless future. You got to believe in these level. That's more people. It's like the believing thief. If he was alive today, he believed. He's one of the two thieves that's on the cross. One believed, one didn't. Jesus said, this day you're going to be in paradise. Well, imagine God said, I'll tell you what. You believe him, I'll let you sit here. Well, this guy would be the guy who came, and he'd sit down in the chair, and we ask him, what are you doing? I'm just waiting for Jesus to come take me to heaven one day. And he's been doing it for seven years. Now, that might sound funny, or even seem funny to you, but that's what's bad, basically what some people have done. They've just been going through the motion. God said they had a form of God, and this but they deny the power of the life of the God of, of the salvation. So basically you just sit down in the chair and you're waiting. He said, no, no, you're just sitting down in the chair. Well, you're going doing things that, uh, that has nothing to do with God's assignment for your life. So you might as well be sitting in the chair. And you're just waiting for God to get you out of here. And you're gonna find out tonight that's not what God saved you for. Absolutely not. You know, if that's the case, you know he'll save you, shoot you, go to heaven. Save you, shoot you, go to heaven. <laughs> you know. But most people, that's all they talk about. They don't, they don't get that you were saved for something more. You have more of a purpose inside of you. Jesus, his disciples, training them not to go to heaven. Training them, showing them the power of God that lives inside of them that they're going to affect the earth. My sad thing is this. The reason why the world, America is divided is because the church is divided. That's my heart. I got to get the church back together. We're divided on everything, on every level, and we turn to the world and wonder why the world's acting the way they are. We're going to talk about this. I'm not going to preach tonight, but I must teach this because I'm tired of hearing it. It's the unbalance of God's control. So when you, I know I say, look, I get my cues from atheists. Of course I get my cues from God, for the small ass <laughs> out there. But when they ask you, you're going to say, God's in control. And they're going to go to you and say, oh, really? So that car wreck right there, God control that? That baby that just died with AIDS, that baby born with AIDS, he controlling that? But no, brother, that's not how it works. Well, how does it work? You have no answer, do you? Because God's not the author of confusion. God says, study to show yourself approved, or work will not be ashamed. You didn't rather divide the word of the truth on that. That way you can't give a, a, a good answer that's without making God look like he's crazy. <laughs> All right? So when you just holler off and says, I'm not worried about anything because God's in control. <laughs> you know, I'm going to talk about that. It's called the sovereignty of God. We know without God, we cannot. But without us, he will not. You will not see God in the Bible doing anything on this earth unless he's using a human being. Because Genesis 1, 26 says, let them have dominion over the earth. And the Psalms will tell you, says, the earth is the Lord and the full of the earth, but he has given it unto men. See? So therefore, God can do anything. He's almighty. But he has reduced himself down to his word. That's the king's side of And most people don't understand God is king. And when you get that, you understand God is king, God the Father, and God is God. These are three different distinctions that God walks around with. And I've talked to people and I realize, oh, you only know God is God. God is almighty. He can do this. He can do this. Yes, he can. Will he do it for you? Well, you know, you never know what God's going to do. I said, oh, you don't know God as Father. <laughs> now you're missing something. You know, you don't know God. Yeah, but if you learn God's father, like, okay, God's my daddy. And I know my daddy when we have stuff. He said, here, give me the desires of your heart. I said, okay, how do you get the desires of your heart? You're like, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm just going to know. What you going to do? See, you got to write a divide. You better give an answer to this stuff. Now you don't know God is king because the king has protocol how to approach him and you see what he's really done by grace. Oh, can't preach it tonight. Stay tuned. <laughs> I just gave you a taste. You need to know the difference between God, God the Father, and God is King. Because this is where you, you, you get disconnected. And you don't have the right answers. And you don't understand. Now watch this. Isaiah 14 10 says this. I make the known the end from the beginning. I talk real fast, don't I? 
Let me say it again. Isaiah 46 and 10. <laughs> I make known the end from the beginning. From ancient times, what is still to come. Ancient times mean eternal times. Uh, Jesus was called ancient of days, meaning from, from eternity. There's no beginning and there's no end for him. So it's called ancient time. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. This is Isaiah talking about the Lord. God says, I make the end known from the beginning. Don't forget that. That's going to be my theme throughout this teaching tonight. He said he makes the end known from the beginning. Now, I just showed you some quick stuff about how this is in the Bible because he showed you that. If you look at the first two chapters of this Bible in Genesis and the last two chapters of, of, of the Bible in Revelations, they both look the same. God with man with a new heaven, a new earth, walking in peace and harmony. Go script through Revelations. God with a new heaven, a new earth, with man, walking in peace and harmony. What's in between? We're doing the in between now. We're trying to learn ourselves. Tonight I'm going to show you what, what we're supposed to be doing to learn ourselves in between. But God says I make the end known from the beginning. He showed you that in his word. And that's what's going to happen. What you've seen in the beginning, man will be on the earth. I know we're running to heaven. That's going to be temporary. But man will be on the earth, just like the first Adam, in peace and harmony with God on the earth. All right? But it's going to happen again. Now watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 2 says this. To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. Now here's God showing you his ways. Remember Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. When you read scriptures like this and he starts saying this, he's giving you insight. This guy's going to let you know something. Everything that goes on on earth, there's a season for it. We even have the force. There's a season of summer, winter, fall. There's a season in your life when you only can be a what? An infant? An adolescent? You know, a, you know, a toddler? See, these are seasons of your life. And then there's going to be seasons when you're walking with God from faith to faith to glory to glory. You're going to have seasons on these different levels. These are seasons, right? To everything there is a season. And watch this. And a time for every purpose. That's going to help you out. And a time for every purpose. Now, some of you guys, God has spoke to your heart. And you didn't know, like, man, I just thought for sure that God said I'm supposed to be doing certain things and doing this. Read this part of the scripture. It says, and a time for every purpose. And a time for every purpose. I'm going to let you, in the beginning, I'm not even going to warm you. I'm going to give it to you right now. How many of y'all remember the story of Moses? From infant to whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it's drawn out, of course, because he represents, he's a deliverer. But this part, you remember Moses when he first... Uh, he knew that he had a purpose. What did I read? Say Moses had a purpose. Moses had a purpose. What did I just read? There's a time for every purpose. What was Moses' purpose? He was supposed to be a deliverer. He's going to deliver his, his children to Israel, right? All right. But what more Moses did, you remember how Moses killed and murdered. You say murder. He's a murderer. He murdered. An Egyptian uh, a slave taskmaster from beating another Israelite. He hit him, watch this, with a stick of wood. <laughs> and then buried him in the sand. Alright? Now here it is. God says, under heaven there's a time and for a purpose. Because what's what happens? You're gonna find I got a purpose. But you don't know God's time. This is what messes us up. So we'll get ahead of God. A time to be born. A time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what you plant. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. That means we got a clock on us. Before the world began, we was on God's mind. Put a purpose inside of us. We got birth, flesh, and water. God says, let's man born of the spirit. The spirit first. And then he put us in an earth suit. And he said, of oh, water, that's the water breaking. You come through. God said, so you have to be born of both. To be legal. To be a legal administrative on this earth. That's why demons are illegal here, and that's why we can cast them out. Okay? So God's showing you the process. So every time there's a, there's a time to be born, to die, but there's a time for your purpose too. Watch this. Yet who knows whether you have to come to the kingdom now? Let me stop. Let's go back to Moses. He killed a man with a state burial. 
They found out about it. He got afraid, ran away to the desert for 40 years. God meets him in the desert and trains him in the desert. He serves uh, his uh, uncle or whatever, his father-in-law. Then God calls him back and says, hey, I want you to go to Egypt and tell them to let my Israel people go. He's like, oh no. The last time I did that, I became a murderer. <laughs> you know? But what he did was all the time, he knew what he knew he was supposed to be delivering. He said, something just ain't right. See, what, what makes you angry is a part of your purpose. Everybody's not going to get angry because they don't have the same purpose. That's why people get like, man, why are you so bothered about that? Because that makes me really angry. You know, uh, righteous anger. She taught righteous indignation. Something that should be right, like, you know, killing the baby. That should, if that bothers you more, some people care that, like, they see it's wrong. It's not that they don't see it's wrong. But the other person, you really, they want to, like, man, we should do something. I'm going to start posting. I'm going to go and, and knock on doors or something like that and tell them, hey, do you not believe that? See, that's that purpose inside you. That's part of your purpose, or it could be your purpose. That's why it makes you angry. Now, Moses got called back. He went back. Now, watch what God does. Let me show you. This, this is the whole thing about our life and our purpose and having a fearless he says, I know the plans I have for you. I'm sure you're in from the beginning. You're going to discover your purpose sometime, but it might be out of timing. Moses is out of time. But when you look, did he not? He killed the Egyptian and buried in the sand. He tried to do it the hard way, in the flesh. When God did the Spirit, like your job is to get righteous indignation and, 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 and be, be my judge against those who have been persecuting people for 400 years, killing people, slaving them all for now, right? Well, how did Moses wind up doing it? Didn't he wind up killing the Israelites anyway? He wound up taking a stick. That same piece of wood. And God told him to raise it up. And the Red Sea closed upon the Egyptians. And he delivered the people from Israel. Isn't that the same thing he tried to do in the beginning? <laughs> Isn't that the same thing he tried to do in the beginning? See, when you find your purpose, you try to do it in the flesh. It'd be a long time for him to kill all the Egyptians. Ook! I'm saying, ook! <laughs> It'd be a long time. But with God, <laughs> you can do your purpose and it's going to be effortlessly. See, that's the whole purpose of what I'm talking about tonight. This is how you can have a fearless future. Because God puts something inside of all of us that He's going to send through. And all He needs you to do is to what I tell you when you come to the kingdom where you need obedience. And faith. Two things. Obedience and faith. And God says, I got you. Bring your obedience and bring your faith. I'm going to do the rest. I'm going to finance it. I'm going to take care of it. But bring your obedience and some faith. That's the only two things you need. It, Esther, for our day to day, with all the craziness going on, people scared and stocking up food and craziness, yet you know, yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time like this. You didn't get to pick the time you got to come to earth when you were born. You didn't get to pick your parents. You didn't get to pick what year you're in the 50s. You're in, you're in 2020. Lord help us. <laughs> you know, it's been worse times throughout the years and decades. God has seen all kinds of stuff because he lives in eternity. This is our time, guys. And God telling you, in any, every time, have no fear. Watch this. Esther 4.14 says this. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom, we're in the kingdom of God, for such a time like this. So God sees, like, look, I put you in the right time, in the right place, during the right season. During the time they're going to be arguing over uh, presidents like they never did with your mom and dad. Doesn't matter. God, God knows that you've been born for such a time like this. Now watch this. God gives us time for a reason. Now, now he lives in eternity. Why didn't he give us eternity? You know, back in the days, guys lived a long time. They had a lot of time. 900 years, 800 years, 724 years. Lived a very long time. Time is divided to days. Time is divided to days and weeks and years so we can live life in doses. That's why God gave us time. Time is divided to days, weeks, and years so we can live life in doses. Why? But think about Moses. Moses had a purpose. He was, he was called to deliver the people was all the time. He wasn't mature enough to fulfill his purpose. That's why God says seed, time, 
and then the harvest. And when you're trying to do something out of season, uh, all the time, you mess it all up. You know, so that's what God says. Do not pluck something up before it's time. He says, for every time there's a time to plant. And then there's a time. Now you go pick. We got our, our oranges, our citrus trees are growing right now. And they're green, but they actually, this is the time you actually get them. When they turn yellow, they start getting full of water. But they're going to be stronger now as far as the citrus acid for the lemons. He says there's a time to pluck them up. If you pluck them too soon, you're like, ugh. But we plucked at the right time. There's a time for that. Well, that's the way you are. And our job is to walk with God and let God pluck us up. That's why he says, I am the vine. You are the branches. And outside of me, you cannot produce any fruit. See? So God treats you, you are seed. Psalms 118, 24 says this. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in this. This is the day the Lord has made. Every day, the time in doses, this is why God says, when you wake up in the morning, you say, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. Why? Because he got me in the right time. He knows what I'm supposed to be doing from time to time. So, so you wake up every day like, God, oh, what's going on? And he's murmuring and complaining. But that's the fact the children of Israel in the desert in trouble with God. What? They murmuring and complaining during their time when God was actually taking their time to get all that slave thinking out of their mind because he had something better for them. But still didn't recognize the time. What is he doing? Instead of trusting the former things that he had done for them, how he had delivered them, got them out of there, gave them all that gold and silver and favor they got from Egypt before they left. They mom complained. He fed them. They mom complained because they didn't recognize their time. I'm telling you that because remember, we're not no different than they are. We can do the same thing. We start marveling during that time period where God is trying to uh, teach us something. Now watch this. What about years? God gave us years so we could end and begin in life. End and begin in life. Oh Lord, that's that's one of the best things that God gave us. What do you use the Jewish calendar or other English? The grand calendar that we use is still there's a beginning and the end. You know, you know, those people like, oh, like right now, 2020. Woo! I want to get rid of 2020. <laughs> what if there were no years? It's just continuous. <laughs> you know, this is because because remember, it's all about a mindset stamp anyway. You don't have to wait till every new year to start something new. But for some reason, in our human beings, we have to have a framing of our thoughts. To make us say, okay, that's the end. <laughs> this is the beginning. See, you have to have an end and a beginning. He said, I'm God like, no, I show the end from the beginning. You have to have an end and a beginning. If not, it'll be continuous. When God lives in eternity, it ain't going to be like when we go to heaven. There is no time. It's going to forever be that. Thank God it's going to be so perfect that you don't ever want the end. <laughs> it's not like that crazy roller coaster man my wife got on one time. I couldn't wait. For it to end. <laughs> Some people got life, their roller life is just like a roller coaster and they can't wait for it to end. One thing after another after another. I mean, we went to a roller coaster, went to a dark cave, can't wait to get out of this, and it slung you up, slung you down. Man, when this is going to be over? I remember the first time, I, mean, I was a little wimp. I got in the F 16 fighter jet. Some people dream. I mean, they dream of doing it. And I waited to my last career to finally say, okay, I'm going to finally get this thing right because I turned it down. Turned out. Nope, I don't want to go. Nope. You better get in there here. You're about to retire. Said, okay, let me go and take a flight. I've worked in this thing for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. Let me go take a flight. My wife was there with me. As soon as we got off the ground, I wanted to cry like a baby and say, take me back. Take me back. <laughs> now, get me wrong. I'm just not that type of person because when I got in that bad boy, it was, it was like... A roller coaster from you you don't know what. I mean the first thing I know is I never noticed on the ground, the jet's different on the ground and the air is different. They have a canopy. And as soon as you get up in the canopy, the most scary thing happened to me. The canopy designed to uh, be translucent with the clouds. So it looked like you don't have nothing over you. It's just like you just sitting right here and you're looking down and all you can see is ground and clouds. I'm like, oh freaking my head out. I, like, I did not know this happens when you get in there. <laughs> but I was ready for that, that cycle to be over. And I'm only bringing that story up because I know some people life like that. When this is going to be over? That's what God said. He has the beginning. But one thing happened. The same place I took off. It's the same place I landed. <laughs> Just like the roller coaster. The same place I took off. It's the same place I am. That's why it has a beginning 
and an end. You wanted to have that for you to start all over again. You made some bad mistakes in your life. That's over. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. You want to keep it moving. So God gave us years so we can have an end and a beginning. I had some bad years. In my, it's over. End and beginning. What it continues. Now watch this. Time. Time was given to us to provide closer to uh, provide closer to failure and success. Closure. I got closure. My bad. Closure to failure and success. Yes, you want to have that close too. Time is given to you for you can have closure to successes and failure. You're like, wait a minute, I don't have closure to my success. Well, you know the biggest hindrance to success uh, to a progress is success. The biggest hindrance to progress in your life is success. Why? Because you want to hang out there. <laughs> Remember I told you what was tradition? Frozen success. <laughs> you want to hang out there. Where they got, what, 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 in the kingdom what God says, how do I work in the kingdom? I go from what? From faith to faith, from glory to glory. In the kingdom, everything's progressive. Continuous movement. So when you're stuck at the door, <laughs> you, yeah, so the biggest enemy to success, I mean progress, is success. You have to go and create another success. It's like saying, okay, I went to high school. You know, and some people that's good. And it's okay, well, you probably oh, okay, I'm gonna give you a BS degree. And you continue. I'm not saying all education is everything. Uh, you might be um, doing some type of um, blue collar work and you skill level. When I was in the military, we had to go from skill level to skill level. Matter of fact, they made you do it. If you didn't, you want to get out. If you don't progress as your rank and your skill level don't go with it, they say, okay, we love you. When you're listening to something, you got to go. Why? Because you're not progressing. We want, we want, the military, that's right, the military is the same thing as the kingdom. We want the best, we want to keep retaining the best and more efficient people in the thing. So, now, of course, God didn't get rid of you, but at the same time, he can use you. You know, but you'll be part of the family. But God only uses those something that He can use. He's looking for the obedient and full of faith. Obedient and full of faith. That's all you need for God to use you. But you have to be obedient. Now watch this. The future of all creation is hidden in the creation. The future of all creation is hidden in the creation. Are you a crazy being? Yes, we're just crazy in the image of God. So what happens then? If I'm a creative man, I mean, the future, my future is hidden inside of me. You all heard about the seed. I told you about, I think, the most important thing is the environment. The seed is very, very important. Don't get me twisted. Because the seed has everything it needs in the self-contained. But it only produces in the right environment. If you take a seed and throw it on a hard floor, it won't produce. With all that potential, with all that is just sitting there. Well, that's the same way you are. You have to get in the right environment for the seed of your future to first. Now, flourish. Now, what we, our number one environment is the presence of the Lord. There's several ways you can get in the presence of God. And we talk about through all the teachings. Getting in His Word is the main thing. God says, study to show yourself approved. Unto God. When you read the word, study God, he said, don't just read, just study it. Go off and godliness. You know? So we have everything we need. And most people don't understand that. That's why God's sitting there telling you, when I used to read that scripture over and over, like, I don't get that, I don't get that, I don't get that. What do you mean you have given me everything that came to life? No. I, I did not get that at all. But God says he has. Now watch this. The future of the seed is outside the seed. It's not outside the seed, it's in the seed. Here's another, here's our confidence though. For your fearless future. Here's our confidence. That our future is God's past. Our future is God's past because we live in eternity. Uh, I'm going to like no other, I'll show you the end from the beginning. This is how we face the future with confidence. No manufacturer makes anything without finishing it first. Do you understand what I just said? No manufacturer makes anything before it finishes it first. Ford Motor Company make a car. They finish it before they actually make it. They got blueprints, images. <laughs> they got all kinds of stuff. The car is actually finished. And then they go back and build it. 
See? So here's our confidence. If God put us out here, Psalm 139, 14 says it, I would praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Sometimes I look at cars and say, man, look at that car. It was wonderfully made. You know, same thing. And God says, that's the way you are. You're his handiwork. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. I sound like a car now, don't I? When I was made in secret, I skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. I'm formed. That means I'm not born yet. My body's not formed. But my spirit is. He saw my spirit. Watch this. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. All those days were in your book. What book do you think he's talking about? Yeah, yeah, you're reading the end time eschatology. We haven't done that study in a very long time. It says your name was written in. Here's his. He's saying my name was written in your book before you even formed me. You put me in your book. Why? No manufacturer makes anything before he finishes. God's beginning of us is I'm gonna make a human. And I'll start. My first stage of making here is first of all putting my book alive. He put it down the book of life. And then he worked his way back. To I was produced. And to the day I was born. That's what he's saying in the scripture. Psalm says, your eyes saw my unformed body. I wasn't born yet. All the days you ordered me, ordained, for me to be written in your book before one of them came to be. He says, before, before I had my body, before you made me, before I was formed, you knew me, and you wrote my name in the book. It's almost like, let's make... Let's make a Lexus. Let's make a Cadillac. <laughs> Let's make it. You know, you write it down first and like, what's a Cadillac? And then they work their way back. All right. So what, look at this next verse. It says, how precious to me are your thoughts. God, how vast is the sum of them. The way God thinks. How precious are how you think. See, see, David didn't tap in. He's not looking just at God. He didn't tap into the intimacy of a father. And now he realized God tapped. When I look at your handiwork, when I see how you meticulously did everything, my goodness, this is how precious to me are the way you think and the way you operate. That's why I get excited. When I learn so much revelation about God and his kingdom and what he put in place and what he put inside of you and I, I get excited because like, my goodness, I was clueless about who I was and what you really did for me. It's like you buying a brand new car. And you got all these different trinkets in it, but you only know how to operate five <laughs> See? That's the way we are. And then the rest of the stuff that you have is everything that you need to make your life so much more pleasant. Matter of fact, you start looking for it in something else. When you have everything that you need. See? Oh, I'm telling you. It's time for us to learn what God has really done to us and who we are. We made in the image of God. You look at Jesus. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. This is how God thinks. And when I wake up, you are still with me. He has tapped into the intimacy, the presence of the Lord, the inner courts. God has so many plans for us. God, that um, God's book of life is already finished. The book for your life is already finished. God has wrote a best seller of you. You're trying to figure out what chapter am I on? <laughs> am I chapter three? Chapter four of my life? This is why you can have a fearless future. My life story is already written. The world and Satan and his fiends and the kingdom of darkness are very talented in getting you drawn into the kingdom of darkness. And you forget that. And the next thing you know, you're arguing with other people. You're looking at family members. You're looking at friends strange. Because you forget what God says right here in this word about what are you talking about? Your life is already written. If you're going through something, I've seen that. And if I allow you to go through it, I wrote that. It's a part of your story. <laughs> okay? But yet, I'm going to hold you to obedience and faith. Be anxious for nothing. 
But pray to me. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask God. Who would give it to you? You don't know what's going to ask me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. Your life is already written out. It's time for you to have a fearless future and know that. First of all, done. I'm not even afraid of dying anymore. For a very long time, I got rid of that. You would believe what I'm really afraid of. Dying when I'm fulfilling my purpose. I'm more terrified than that than anything. I don't want to get there and says, and I told you, I, I have a dream that you get up to heaven and you got these cutouts of you. You see them cut out for He was he was this and he was that. And I'm going to get there, I'm going to get beside it. What? I have missed it. You know, you take it. <laughs> you want to fulfill your purpose. Don't get me wrong. You sh if that shouldn't happen if you're on your assignment and doing, and doing the will of God. But if you just, if you like to believe in thief, which a lot of we have a lot of those, they get saved, they sit in that chair of life, doing whatever they want, never checking with God. I don't believe in going to church. I don't believe in organizing it. No man of God, no prophet, no word, no nothing. The only thing you know is I, I believe in Jesus and I'm going to heaven. Next crisis, I believe in Jesus and I'm going to heaven. Next crisis, I just, I just know God's in control. <laughs> you know, you're stuck. You are so far from. You like a brand new car that has everything in it, no gas, never been driven. <laughs> you know, you have missed your purpose. <laughs> you know, so this is the kind of stuff that's been going on. And I'm, I'm looking like, oh my God, my God. How many people do this to you? And we don't know. Here's the Bible telling you instructions in righteousness. The early first century church did this. They knew they had a purpose. Here's something that we have to learn. We must learn to get hungry and thirsty for the things of God again. God says they will overcome by what? By the blood. That's your righteousness to get you clean. I believe in Jesus. All right. And by your testimony. He brought me out of some serious, serious stuff. Tell it. Tell everybody that. Tell your story. Don't hide your story. All right. Watch this. And then, here's the last part that most people just leave off with. He says, and they did not, <clears throat> uh, he says, they did not even take consideration of their life even unto death. This is why I tell you, I'm not scared to die. I'm scared to fulfill my purpose. You're supposed to die when you got baptized. That's why the second calling is so apparent. He reminds you. He says, now if any man come after me, let him give up his life. Let him die to his own will and do my will. Let him follow me. And he said, and even be willing to what? Yeah. See, that's what you're signing up for. But nobody knows that. It's like, no, I'm going to do my thing. I believe in Jesus. I'm going to do me. Well, you are believing thief for the cross. You're dead way. Everything that the world can throw at them, you're going to get. You're going to get none of this stuff. You have access to it, but you're not accessing it. You're not appropriating to receive the freely things. God has freely done, given everything by grace. It's not the works. That's your faith. You got saved. You're part of the family. But the access, you have to appropriate and use your faith according to your faith. Jesus starts telling you, you follow me. He said, all the disciples will follow him now. If you want to access heaven, it will be according to your faith. If you want to be a part of my program, the kingdom of God, or even part of our family, you must believe, I believe in the one who sent me. I'm trying to make this stuff simple. Because we take it and we are, take that part and try to run with everything else. That's a separate entity there again. Because now, if any man come after me, let him work out his own salvation. Wait a minute, it's not a work. You need to work out my own salvation, Lord. Now he's talking about all the stuff you want from me. Use your faith and go get it. Pull it from the invisible realm. I have freely put it in, in, in the invisible realm by grace. I have given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. Now you use your faith and you start getting it. That's once you accepted me. To accept me, you just have to believe that Jesus is the one you sent, that God sent him. Real simple. Your future. Your future is unreleased destiny. Unreleased destiny. Why do I say it that way? Because you already have destiny inside you. You think like, yeah, yeah, you're back. No, you think it's potential. Don't get potential mixed up with destiny. Everybody has potential. But when God decided to yank you from the spirit realm 
and put you in here. He put a purpose inside of you. And that is your destiny. Now you're thinking, no condemnation of those who cry. You're thinking like, okay, well, what, have I, what have I got my death? What have I got my hurt? But first of all, it's a journey. You can't pull a Moses. Well, you probably could. <laughs> you know, it's a journey because by the time God gets you to where you need to be, you're going to be walking in a lot more maturity than you were when you figured out that I had a gift and that I had a calling and that I had a purpose. You can do that as a baby. <laughs> you baby Christ. You're going to figure that real quick. Oh, look, I can sing. Look, I can do this. You got a gift. Praise the Lord. You got a gift. All right? And then people try to go through their life just to get for long. But your gift was not given to you for you just to have a gift. Your gift was part, you're going to need that for your purpose. All right? And you got to discover this. So your future is unreleased destiny. That's all it is. You already have a purpose. Remember, your story is already written. What chapter are you on? Watch this. Your future is the end trap in the beginning. Your future is the end trap in the beginning. You mean just like God says, I show you the end from the beginning. So God says, I trapped your beginning. <laughs> I said, your future is the end trap in your beginning. So here you are. You got everything you need. And God says, even the end of my life is already inside me. The end of the chapter of my life is already within me. Here, that's why he says, I have given you what? Everything. Now this stuff makes sense. <laughs> now that you know, when he said, I remember I gave you everything that pertains to life and godliness, and this is why he is sitting on the throne, sitting, and Jesus said, it is finished. He's done. He's sitting. And now the Holy Spirit is down here doing the work through us to help us carry out our purpose and our destiny. That's why the Holy Spirit is the most important person on the planet right now. That's one fact. The other fact, he is also the most ignored person on the planet. See our dilemma. Truth will make you free. <laughs> Amen. You're not ahead of you, but trapped within you. You're not ahead of you, but trapped within you. Is I missed it. Your future is not ahead. Yeah, your future is not ahead of you, but trapped within you. Thank you. I missed it. Gotta catch that girl. <laughs> we talking about your future here. I did put it at the top. There is another word future. It's right there. <laughs> Your future is not ahead of you, but it's trapped within you. Isn't that something? Yeah. Hey Amen. Because why am I saying that? I'm trying to I'm trying to renew your mind now. Because you be saying stuff like this, you be saying, nobody knows the future hope, bro. Only God. So that's very religious. Jesus didn't say that. <laughs> and His Word doesn't say that. He's telling you what your future. He says, I show you the end from the beginning. There's nothing what new. Under the sun. So he's telling you what once before will be again. He's telling you if you want to know the future, look at the past. <laughs> you know, you can't be sitting around talking about, well, Lord, I didn't know. What do you mean you didn't know? I told you. I even showed you the picture. I even some movies used to confuse me because you know how some of the movies you start out, they start in the future first and then they start going backwards. And like, wait, what's going on? What's going on here? And then, well, that's what God did. He starts, he starts you off, and then he show you. I show you the end from the beginning. This is why you seen Joseph when he had a dream, the dreamer. He showed the end from the beginning. He had a dream, and God showed. Him, oh, I see myself, and I got this, and I got this, and He told him. He told him his future. Because God showed him what the end at the beginning. God ain't going to show you the details in between. Think about it. Think about poor Joseph. You see all the stuff Joseph went through? People who haven't read the story. Rejected by his brothers. Clothes yanked out, tripped naked by your own family. You know, thrown in the pit. Left over for a wild beast to get you. Sold to slavery. All right? You know, then he finally goes to slavery and worked himself up. By my own good, I see. I finally did it. I used my gift and it got me to the palace. He's in the palace in one of the highest courts. Got accused of rape. He didn't even do it. 14 years in prison. 
before he asked you that first thing God said, I showed you the beginning, the end from the beginning, that story, it didn't happen. But look at all the stuff he went through. Now let me make sure this. If God came to Joseph and said, hey, this is going to happen. <laughs> you're going to lose your family. <laughs> you're going to this. Gonna... Would you be like, yeah, I'm going to sign up for that. We wouldn't do it, would we? This is why God says, I'm going to show you the end and the beginning. But the in-between, you have to walk by faith. The just shall what? Live by faith. This is why I say when you see the stuff going on with the president stuff, what are you doing? That's part of your story. That's part of your story. Don't get involved. You, you still walk in by faith. You only can pray for, pray for what you think is good. The Holy Spirit lead you. Not leave that stuff alone. It has nothing to do with your destiny. Because God already wrote your story. So we were born, maybe we were born what? For such a time like this. So yeah, that's why God don't tell you all those details. You would, <laughs> what's that? Oh yeah, and then, oh I like that. That's a good point. Satan's not on this, he don't know all things. He only know what we say. All right, so once we start saying stuff, he starts seeing enemies to actually block it. That's why God don't tell you all the details. All right? Even Jesus said, you know, people like, when, it, when you come and establish the earthly kingdom at that time, because the spiritual kingdom's already rolling in him and in them. He said, but when you come and establish the earthly kingdom at that time, he says, nobody knows that but the Father. What if we were told him, oh yeah, and, and when this, this day happened, that's what's going to happen. You know what Satan went down up at that time? <laughs> you know <laughs> You just gotta have trip faith and trust in God. Is anything too hard for God? Rhetorical. No. So I tell people, like, look, when I realize God the Father, and see, first he's God, he's Almighty. He can make anything. If you don't have it, he can make it. He can bring me back to life. If I was to drop dead right now, he can <laughs> bring me back up. That's God. But then God the Father, the love of God the Father, I'm not worried. I trust him, like, God, I trust you. If you tell me I need to go and do this and do that, I'm gonna do that. God, I trust you. If I need to go ahead and talk to this person, do that, I'm gonna do that. Because that's God the Father now. I get it. But see, if it's just God, you have to disconnect. You know God is able, but you don't know will he do it for me. That's God the Father. That kicks in. And then God as king is the instructions. See? Then you now you get into the, that Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Now you get into the king's side. You know, not the Ten Suggestions, but the king. Now watch this. It says... Uh, you possess your future now, not tomorrow. Isn't that awesome? I have everything. You possess your future now, not tomorrow. Amen. God is committed to the future. This is what I want to get to. This is very serious right here. God is committed to the future he placed in your present. He's committed to that. How do you know that God's not moved by needs? He's moved by what? Faith, right? But he is committed. You know the word of God says God's working out everything for our good? Everything? You seen the stuff that we've been through? I'm talking about you. I ain't talking about the president. I'm talking about you as an individual, your life. Think about your life. You've been through some stuff. You're like, really, God? Did he not do it for Joseph? He's where I'm working out everything for your good. Now, is he causing all that to happen? No. But can he work with it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is anything too hard? For God. Some of the things, like Jesus said, Jesus led, I mean, Jesus said the Holy Spirit, he led the Holy Spirit into the world to be tempted by Satan. All right? But at the same time, you didn't ever see God sending Jesus in any paper place where he's trying to kill him off, do harm to him. You know? Because why? That was, that was not God, because we would confuse God with Satan. Satan comes only what to what? Kill. Still and destroy. So God would never lead you into anything has to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Now I would do something in my flesh that would lead me to that area of it could get me killed. It could destroy my life. <laughs> you know, or it could destroy, you know, kill, steal, and destroy. But I can do that. But God won't ever lead me to that. But can he work with that? Yes. That's what he does. But don't get it twisted, because you hear somebody paint this image of a father. Because they don't know God the Father. They only know God. Well, you know, I just believe God gave me counsel before I can be humble. What? Oh. That's the error of not knowing God the Father. 
You only know God. See? You got to know God's father. Because you, you, you know God's father. Like, wait a minute, let me get this right. You've been a bad kid, really bad. Your mom told you, sit down, shut up, don't do that. Okay, I'm, you want to act right? I'm going to put some cancer on you, but you sit, you slip down still now, won't you? <laughs> See? Oh, no. Would that be a good father or bad? What we say, God is what? God is what? Good. How? When? All the time. And all the time, God is. So that would be very bad, right? So when you hear somebody talk like you already know, they only know God, but they don't know God the Father. Then you get the other people. They don't understand the instructions. Like God was telling us as a church right now, if my people who call by my name, if they will humble themselves, you know, turn from their wicked ways, you know, and then pray back to me, I can fix all this stuff and just like that. That's God as king. Because anytime you hear an instruction, he's going to his king's side. We don't understand king. I understand not us, because we study the kingdom of God and the king who has the kingdom. Most people don't. God says, seek ye first what? The kingdom. Make it number one, make it the biggest priority. And the righteousness, my instructions in righteousness. And it says, then everything will be added unto you. A lot of people do not understand that. All these like, I can tell you God and Jesus will go to heaven one day. No instructions. No, you understand what God wants you to do. He has done everything. You're begging him for stuff that he's already done. You can't even beg God to heal you. He can go back to you. Well, hold up, hold up. By his stripes, you are healed. Not will be. Are. When did you do it? 2,000 years ago. And you're crying for that. Why? Kingdom instructions. How do you receive healing? Several different ways, you're right. How to receive when he is freely done by his grace. Ignorance. My people perish for what? A lack of knowledge. And then some people says they reject it. Alright? My job is always when you come to see me or come alive is to conquer your ignorance. Because I was failing big time because I was very ignorant of God's ways. This is the way to choose your life. I realize you don't know God's way. You don't know his truth, and you don't know the life that he's already planned out for. I didn't know that I had a future. I read the scripture, God says, for the plans I have for you are good, and they're a future. I'm like, okay, cool, well, would you let me in on that? <laughs> you know, that's what I'm thinking, because I'm going through so much stuff. Like, okay, that's true, Lord. That's good to say, nice scripture. But when are you going to let me in on that secret? You know what I'm saying? What is this plan? Because right now, I ain't feeling it. Until you get more into the intimacy of God, God the Father, you realize you can trust Him. You can trust God the Father. The world only knows God. When you got born again, He goes from God to God the Father. That's why Jesus came up here. He ascended. He told, remember when Mary Magdalene was the first one to come to Him and, and see Him rose up. And she went to the tomb. She seen two angels. She came out and she ran to God. And she says, they have stolen my Lord. What should I do? And, and he goes, he, and he says, Mary. And she goes, Lord? Because she's unrecognizable to her. And she just went, oh, my. Uh, don't touch me. I have not ascended to heaven and sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat to cover all the stuff I've been preaching for, for you guys. Finally, going to get it all now. Okay? <laughs> so don't touch me. But the next time you see Jesus he meets them again on his last time he's about to leave on, on the mountain. And he tells them, now I go to my father and your father. Up to that point, all Jesus ever said, my father, my father, my father, my father is in heaven. And my father is in heaven. He said, mine, mine. He didn't say ours. But he did tell me to teach you to pray. He says, when you pray, because he knew it was going to come the time, he already knew what was going to happen. Say, our father. At the time, they couldn't really say that. Because they weren't part of the family yet. <laughs> they, until that blood became blood brothers. We got adopted by what Jesus did on the cross. Amen? Oh, I hope y'all are getting this. You have to get this stuff, what God did for us. So now, he's your father. It's, it's a difference between you know, God. God the Father. And then God is King. Because you want to understand the instructions. Instructions in righteousness. Your future is more important than your past. Your future is more important 
then you're, but you want you want to really hone on that one. Your future is more important than your past. Watch this memories. We got some bad bad memories in our life. So stuff that we want to forget that we didn't even know nothing about. It needs to go. We got some bad memories. God says that's why your future is more. That's why He don't never bring up your past. The only person who bring up your past is Satan through your memory. By him stimulating, the, the enemy going to come in and fan the fly. You remember what you did? How can you sit there and talk to those people like that when you know you did that 5, 10, 20 years ago? Where's he See, he's going to bring it up. No, God never going to bring it up. He said, I'm, not, I'm done with it. I didn't do all this stuff in the sea of, of forgiveness. You're never going to hear me bring up your path. But I'm going to talk about you and your future. Oh, he's all about that future. Why? Because I put a future inside you. And when I tell you earlier, he's committed to that. That's what he's coming after. He's coming after you guys for the future he put inside you. Oh, watch this. For the seed he has planted. He's after that. God said, oh, this is why God gets all excited. He's got all these instructions and telling you he's going to chase you down. to make lead the 99. All this. Why is he chasing you down? God said, I mean, I'm going to chase you and overcome you. He said, even blessings going to do that for you. I'm going to make sure you have all you need. Why? I put a purpose in you. For you to finish your destiny and your assignment before you come back back to daddy. Before you return back to daddy, uh, did you do what I told you? A lot of people don't know they're supposed to have a sign. Jesus telling them the whole time. Your future is more valuable than your past. It's more important and it's more valuable than your past. You gotta put this stuff behind. Moses was told to bring the people out of Israel, remember that? Think about Moses like, uh-uh, I tried that before, I ain't going back that stuff no more. What happened last time? I murdered somebody. And God used them. A murderer. How about that? David, a man that owned God's heart, who had a man killed for his wife. How about that? What's God more concerned about? The destiny I put inside you. I know what I got inside David. I know what I put inside Moses. I know what their story they're supposed to be doing. What about your story? Don't you know you got something inside you? It's time for us to waken up to what God has planned for us to do. This earthly living stuff, that's why God says, do not be entangled with the cares of this world system. I'm telling you right now, a lot of believers got entangled. I can tell the way they talk to each other. I can tell the way they act. I said, you're entangled. Yeah, you're in an entanglement, a real entanglement. God says, do not be entangled with the world with cares of this world. Because why? Your life is already written. What they got to do with you? You're like Superman. When Superman see me walking among all this stuff going on, had nothing to do with him from his own country, Superman's going to do his task. And that's where you are. Jesus died to forgive your past to salvage your future. <coughs> see? He died for your past. Why? What's the most important priority? Your future. He's trying, I'm trying to save that future. I ain't going to let that past destroy what I put inside you. And he don't want you to do it either. You got something inside you. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Your past is, what well, says, your past is dead unless you give it life. The only person who give it life is you. Now, you're going to have some help. Satan going to use you to keep bringing up your past. Yeah, you just don't know what I did. Oh, you just don't know that. Oh, yeah, you just don't know. Yeah, I know. Uh, somebody uh, heard you, somebody in old in your flesh who knew what you did to bring it up. But when you hear it, just remember this. That's not of God. That's not of God the Father. God told you, I don't know. How did you bring the path to the Father? God, you know the reason why. How can you want me to do that? You know, I just feel so bad That's what I did 20 years ago. And you're like, that's a distraction. What did I tell you I did with that? I threw that in the sea of forgiveness. So you can't go in prayer bringing up something you did. If you did that, you're in the flesh, and Satan is bringing this up in you because you can't bring it to the Father. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I forgot it. You know, so we, we have to learn that because I realize it's one of the hindrances where we, we don't know who we are. Don't know what we have inside us. Don't know we have a purpose. False humility. False humility. God can't stand this. Pride is another form of pride. Is not believing what God said you are. 
that's another form of pride. Most people look at the person. Now you find somebody like me who knows what God said about me, and God said, no, I said, I'm all that back. Yeah, I'm gonna go out here, I'm gonna go for this. And they look at his arrogant self. See, God didn't bring him down a couple of notches. See? That's what they think. See? And that's what they said. That's the same thing they said to Jesus. Because he knew who he was. He wouldn't wait for nobody to give him feedback. He had a download from his father. You got a download from your father with the written word. A one who will give you revelation knowledge. And you realize who you are. You saw walking this people and think, oh, you're arrogant. You can see arrogance in the world. Because watch this. Because God is not even mentioned or involved. <laughs> if this guy says he's going to do all this stuff in Christ, how are you going to do all that, man? I can do all things in Christ. I can do that. I can do all in Christ. God said I'm this. I'm going to be this. God said I can do this. I'm going to do this. That's not arrogance. That's confidence. He says, cast away not your what? <laughs> confidence so it draws a great reward. That's in the scripture. He said you're not to cast that confidence away. The confidence you have in our Father, God is there to believe and there for somebody to exercise some faith and exercise what he put inside them. That barely ever happens. He says, don't cast that type of confidence away. Now what people do, they cast God away and walk in their own confidence. Now that you can get rid of. That's a hot mess. It's a way that seems right to man, but you're always in, in destruction. Your past is dead unless you bring it up. Don't drive looking in the rear view mirror. Don't drive looking in the rear view mirror. Let it go. Let it go. That's the song. Let it go. No, I ain't <laughs> Praise God. Now, what does freedom look? Um, what does freedom from your past look like? Because I'm talking freedom here tonight. I'm talking fearless future. And all you have a fearless future, you have to have freedom from your past. Your past is an anchor weight. If you, you take that along with you, you can't go. Because God, God says, if you, if, you was, if you was running well, who hindered you? Well, who hindered you is somebody bringing up your past. And that who brought up your past could be you and your own thoughts. God says, now cast those thoughts down and anything that exalts itself against the word of God. So if I bring up something I did real bad, say Moses, mercy, by mercy, and my bad sins I did in the old past, and I bring them up. God says, cast those down. Why? Because now your thoughts are exalting itself against the word of God. The one you study to show yourself through, where you know that one, one scripture said, well, I can't bring up my past. God said, he took my past and he threw it in the sea of forgiveness. So if I bring it up and meditate on it, now I'm exalting that above his word. Casting down every image, every thought, every imagination that goes against what did I have to tell you. Didn't I tell you I threw it in the past? But you bring it up again. See? You got to cast it down. What does freedom from your past look like? This is going to help y'all. Here's a list. Check this out. You are not free until you, your past has not no more effect on your future. You are not free until your past has no more effect on your future. So if it's still affecting you, you can't be free. That's an anchor weight. God says what? Cast every weight aside. That's hindering you for you can go and do the things that God told you to do. You are not free until you can talk about your past with a smile. Can you talk about your past with a smile? Until you're able to do that, that's why I was talking about testimony. They were overcome by the blood and they were the testimony. The believing thief, he'd be like this. Man, I was a thief. We stole everything. Man, we planned a bank robber one time, man. We did it. got caught. And then we went to prison for five years. I got out, man. And then I turned around and guess what? I think I learned my lesson. Didn't learn it. Went out and planned another one and did it. Somebody needs to hear your testimony. That's what I used to do. God delivered me from that. They need to hear your raw testimony. Not I had a problem. I used to struggle. People get free when they hear a raw testimony. Because he shows the glory and the goodness of God. What? God did What? And the more raw it is, and sincerity from the heart, the more it sets other people free. But all this other stuff, playing games, remember, they was overcome by the blood and the word of the testimony, and they did not value their life even unto death. That's three. You know, we so far from the first century church, but yet we want the first century church results, power, demonstration. 
You have to have the right mindset. They hunger and thirst for God. They knew who they were. They knew they had a purpose. They knew they had an assignment. You know, they, they didn't care about that. They were thrown in the lion's den. You read some of the moral stories in the, in the lion's den, they, they were run. They knew they were going to die. They ain't waiting for the lion to come. They ran towards him because they knew absent from the body, present with the Lord. I ain't going to sit here and be your entertainment. I'm going to go be with the Lord. You can have his old word too. It's a cult. I'm done. See? Right mindset. You got to meditate and think about this stuff now. Instead of getting offended, being offended by anything in the world, the cares of the world, all this crazy stuff, somebody offended. I'm like, that's nothing compared to what the glory of God has for you. You are not free until you're not afraid that people find out about your past. You are not free if you're afraid. Oh, somebody, what's somebody talking about? This is why I like what, you know, and this is what they used to do in, in, in the first century church. This is why they had some power. Everything was pure. They cleansed the body of the church. They didn't have a whole bunch of people, doubters hanging out in the church, a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of craziness, rumors. And if it did, Paul started writing letters and said, what are you doing? I hear you have to take care of it. Take care of it right now. They took care of that stuff. Why? Because that stuff hinders the power of God. They used to tell you, if you have all with your brother, bring it before everybody else. Why? That's a cleansing. You're embarrassing? You're thinking about embarrassing. You're thinking about you. No. You're not just bringing it out. Hey, this brother says I did this. I'm just letting you know, hey, I feel like I did that. Didn't do that to him. And I'll, right before you guys, if I have on a, you know, ask you for my forgiveness. And everybody heard you give forgiveness. Now, he walk around so acting funny towards you. Now, the whole congregation knows that this brother's acting funny. He's the one now at fault and kept it pure. That gets away rumors, because that's all people going to do. I heard it. I heard it. You heard nothing. Meeting right before the brother's family. His room. Done. Squash. Why? Because Satan loved that. God said, that's the kind of stuff that sucks power out of my church. God says, come before me with a pure heart. That's why he says, if my people call my name, turn away from their wicked ways. What's wicked ways? Rumor, talk about your brother, slander, all that stuff. This is the kind of stuff that's in the body of Christ. You have to acknowledge it in order to get rid of it. If you pretend to stick your head in the sand that we don't have issues, no, we got issues. We're divided on every area. I want God to cleanse the body because I want us to have the glory before we come in because out of here. The glory of God. Psalms 57 and 2 and 3 says this. Here's, here's the psalmist crying out. David, I cry out to God the Most High. He said, I cried out to you, Lord, to God who will fulfill his purpose for me. He said, I cried to God. You don't want to fulfill your purpose for me. He's going to fulfill his purpose for me. He will send from heaven. Watch this. He will send from heaven. What do you think he's going to send from heaven? Mission angels. Are we not heirs of ministering angels? We got angels who, who, who do God's bidding. They're hard to the voice of God's word. He says, from heaven and save me. He will put the shame, put to shame him who tramples on me. This is why I can tell you guys. He says, God says, all these people who are mad and offended and think they can go out there. I'm, I'm mad. I'm going to And God says, vengeance is the Lord. You don't go out there and be avenge yourself. This is what I tell you. If you walk up here in righteousness and in yourself, you don't have to, about, you have to go about there and try to avenge yourself. They tell you he's going to avenge me. He says he's going to put the shame. He's going to do those who try to trample on me. You trample on people with your tongue. See, don't fool with people who walk upright. Now, if you out there acting calm just as you are, you ain't to worry about it. But people who are in prayer, who are walking upright, and people are dogging and putting their tongue on them, watch those people life. That's a curse. You're cursing yourself. Do not put your hands on God's righteous meaning people who are walking and following Christ upright not people I believe in Jesus I want to go to heaven we got plenty of those <laughs> we thought we got some people who are actually walking with God that's what Jesus the second calling people who are giving up their life a second we ain't talking about perfection never do we talking about some people who are literally trying to walk with God who's in high pursuit of God who's looking to study word who's looking to pray those people don't fool with them now all the carnal people, you ain't got to worry about them. God says, even I don't listen to their prayers. God says, if I hide iniquity in my heart, I know the Lord will not hear from me. You know, we don't understand how God works. No, are they part of the family? Yes. Will they go to heaven one day? Yes. If that's all they want, sit in the chair. Well, we're talking destiny. We're talking power demonstration. We're talking when God, you get to heaven, God says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You know why he's crying out? Like I did. 
I cried out, God, I'm a mess. I'm messing it all up. I need help. He's crying out. And that's what you have to do. You need to cry out to God. God, I need your help. If any man lacked wisdom, he already told you. Think about what God's saying. Meditate on it. If you're perishing in any area of your life, you're going to say you're perishing for what? You don't know something. Then he tells you, but that's okay. If you don't know something, you have not because you, <laughs> you know, seek knocking what? The door is going to be open. He's telling you all these secrets. Now, who's blocking it? I just told you, you guys, y'all know these scriptures. You know what block? It's a mental block because the enemy comes in. Those who hear instruction like this from the kingdom of God, he says, Satan himself comes and block it. That you won't get this and get it in your heart. When you get this stuff serious, you're like, wait a minute, my goodness. Seriously? You mean to tell me why I'm having a problem because I don't know something? But I got access to everything? And then my God says, follow my need? And that, yes, yes. And all the promises of God's what? Yes. And amen. Yes, you got it all. And the only reason you're going to have more in your life, because the kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, line yourself with the king. Peace, the shalom God, nothing missing, nothing broken. The anxiety, all these people, all these believers take a medication for anxiety when God's telling you, what? Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. You have to access God. You only pressure from a lack of knowledge. Our part two of that is you're rejecting. I know I'm supposed to read my word, but I have time. Rejection. I, I know the Bible said that, but you know I got to do me. Rejection. Okay? God said, oh, you reject knowledge. And you perish. He said, you're perishing. That's the two only reasons you're going to perish. You don't know you're ignorant. You do know you don't want to do it. Perish. Equals perishing. The another verse says, you are being destroyed by the kingdom of darkness system. Because you're living in the darkness. The valley of shadow of death. But we have, watch this, 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, this is us. But we have this treasure. We, we got this treasure in jars of clay. That jars of clay would be us. Remember, this is the earth suit. We're spirit beings. We live in the earth suit. To show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. When people see you doing the things that you do, and they're like, wait a minute. God said he takes the base things of God and confound the wise. They're looking, at, they're looking at you because they're going to size you up. They're trying to figure out, you? You? How you? You the one that did all this? So they're trying to size you up. And here's Second Corinthians 4 itself says, but we have this treasure. They don't understand. Something inside us. We got something inside us. <laughs> In an earthen vessel that surpasses. He says surpassing the power. That belongs to God. This is why God is hot in hot pursuit of us. God says, I'm not, I got a treasure. Remember he said the kingdom of God is like a man who has a treasure in the, in the field. And he sells everything. Sold us Jesus. Everything he had to go buy the whole field. That would be all of us. God's the love the world. He sold these treasures that he put in. He says, I'm not going to let the go waste. I'm going to chase you down. I'm going to send people. When you fall down, I'm going to let you get up. You might go through some rough period. Uh, the law of sea time has to kick in, but I'm going to be there to pick you right back. Why? Wow, you got a treasure inside you. You got destiny inside you. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you go. Uh, verses uh, 2 and 8, 2 Corinthians 4 8 says this. We are hard pressed. We're hard pressed on every side, yet crushed. We are perplexed, but not despaired. God says you're going to have all kind of pressure come upon you. He says, but you're going to be complex, but you're not going to be just despaired. Watch this. Verse 9, you're going to be persecuted, but not abandoned. They're going to talk all kinds of stuff about you. They're going to try to do stuff. But God says, I'm going to be right there with you. Don't worry. You're not going to be abandoned. You're going to be struck down, but not destroyed. Did that not happen to Joseph? All those things I just mentioned there. See? But he wasn't abandoned. God was with him. Even in the pit. Even in the jailhouse. Even when he was accused of rape, falsely accused, I might add, uh, with the Me Too movement. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, but yeah, God says he's not going to abandon you. Why? Because he's going to look over. He says, I'm forever watching my word. He put a word inside of you. Everything's abstained by the word of God. And the word that he put in you says, 
He says, you going to do this and you're going to do this. That's the word he put inside you. Everything is sustained by the word of God. And he says, I watch over what? My word. When people say what? Jesus lives in me. He's real because he lives in me. They say it religiously, but they don't get it. And we, first John tells us what? That Jesus in, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word is God. So the word is in you. And God said he watches over his word to make sure that it is being performed. That's why he's chasing you down. He's not going to give up on you. This is why you come to this horrendous stuff like David and Joseph. And these guys did horrendous stuff, and they wound up being in the Hall of Fame. You look up in the Hebrews, they're in the Hall of Fame. Wait a minute, a murderer in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you know, this guy is a murderer. And this other guy, he set this guy up to take his wife. A man of my own heart. He tells you, my ways are not your ways. Your ways. The future of the product is the manuf- uh, the future of a product is the manufacturer's past. Like I said, you can't even build a house until you show them. You go down and say, I'm build a brand new house. They want to see the, the end before you begin. <laughs> they want to look up all the electrical. They want, we want blueprints. We want to see the land. We want to see the electrical. We want to see plumbing. You know, they want to see the end before the beginning. See? Everything works that way. I told you this is why it's the only thing that happens on earth is the same way that God set it up. And man just figures it out and do it. Ephesians 1 14 says this, just as he shows us in him. Why, when did he choose us? Before the foundations of the earth. When did he choose me? Before he built me. Before the found, before he built me. And before he built the earth. Remember my earth suit is made out of the earth, so the earth wasn't made, so therefore I wasn't made, but he chose me before. So I show you the end from the beginning. Mm-mm-mm. We are not an experiment to God, for I know the plans that I have for you. You're not an experiment. You're not some guys in a glass bubble with some ants in it in the ant form. You have a purpose. You know, and God's not playing, He has a future. The future and the past. The past is the portion of your future you live. The past is a portion of your future you live. You already live upon your future. So have I. So all the mistakes, the pit, the prison, the stuff you've been through, that's part of your future. The past is dead except for the life you give it. I keep telling you. You bring it up to God, you're like, I don't know what you're talking about. So you, you're going to be on your own because he's going to, until you, he, you respond, he's watching over his word. Until you stop speaking word to him, then he responds. But you start speaking your past to him, God, you know what I did, what? He ain't going to respond. Remember that. You cannot go to your future if you live in the past. Don't drive looking in the rear of your mirror. You cannot go to your future. You're living in the past. You got some people on the street right now doing that. Back in back, they sick and they did this to the rock and bad folks. Trying to live in the past. Your future's done. You know? You can't live there. You're supposed to live here. <laughs> you know? Crazy. You cannot change the past. But you could create a new one. Because tomorrow will be part of my past. I don't have a good memory of tomorrow because now I'm on the right path. So you can create a new past, a new past that is. Moving from past, moving from the past. How do you move from the past? I'm gonna close with this another time. How do you move from the past? Philippians 3 says this. Not that I have already attained, this is Paul talking. He says, I have not attained everything, guys. Or am I already perfected? He says, I'm not even perfect. But I press, but I do press on that I may lay hold on that for which Christ has laid a hold on me. He says, I am not perfect. I have not maintained everything I'm supposed to do. But I'm going to press forward to the future to lay hold on the things that I know that the Father has already laid out for me. Like Pac Man and the power of power pills. You know? And that's why you need those power pills because you can have moments in your life like you're just like, you're just gone. It's like mundane every day. I'm, I'm doing the same thing. And then, bow, you get a power pill. Some of you guys have had major movements in your life during this, this COVID. That was your power pill to let you know God is with you. God has promised with that, but you don't, you don't go on. He says, do not, what he says about um, uh, faithfulness, he says, do not grow weary in well doing. Don't do it. Because you're going to hit that power pill, it's going to be sighted, ah, it becomes normal again. I've been doing this for 20 something years, I know. 
And you have to say, for how do you stay hungry and thirsty for more righteousness? I want more, I want more. You gotta stay righteous, you gotta meditate on the thing. Who I am, I got destiny. I just follow my future, I got stuff I'm supposed to do, who I'm supposed to meet. I'm always watching, looking, God, speak to me. I'm supposed to speak to that person, I'm supposed to bless that person, I'm supposed to do that. You have to stay in the zone. No matter what you're doing, you stay hungry. If not, you can become a mundane life. And then you start getting casual with your relationship with God. Do not treat him ordinary. Him is the Holy Spirit. You will grieve him. He's very sensitive because he wants to come out and he's going to give you the presence of Jesus Christ. But you will grieve him because you take it for granted. Don't do it. 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. He's still saying. But one thing I do. This is Paul who used to persecute Christians. He's saying, I, one thing I got this down though, forgetting those things which are behind. Don't bring it up. You have to put the past in the past. And anybody constantly bringing up the past, you need to never take it out of your life. Once you tell them, hey, that's under the blood, Jesus is good with it. Now, if you owe somebody an apology and you're all against your brother, you need to fix that. Don't try to pretend you didn't offend somebody or somebody wrong. You ask for their forgiveness. If they forgive you or not, it has nothing to do with you. You're good with God if you did it from a sincere heart and pure heart. You're good with God. And you move on to your future because you do have a destiny. You can't be distracted by your past. Amen. Do you understand that? All right. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. you got to reach for it now. Reaching forward. It's not going to just come fall in your lap. you got to start reaching for it. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. You got an upward call. He says, I'm pressing. You got to press your way through. Keep going. I mean, I, I feel the same thing. I'm a like man like you. I see what's going on. I'm living in 2020. I see all the craziness. I hear craziness. I'm on social media. I see everything you guys do. But I will not let that get to distract and knowing that I have a calling on my life. You have a calling in your life. We have a destiny. The only reason we exist for this time period is because God says, I knew that was going to happen. Why y'all shocked? God sent Jesus from heaven, watch this, not to take us to heaven, which Christianity focuses on only. I'm going to heaven one day. But to reveal to us what he placed in earthen vessels on the earth. He came down to be down here for our example. Let me show you what, how you guys are made. The first Adam had this. I'm the last Adam. This is what the first Adam was designed to do. And he went about preaching the kingdom of God and explaining what you, what you had inside. Great as he that's in you. That he is in the world, and he showed you only hands on the sacred sticks every cup. You can speak to a wind and say, Get out of here. You're going to cast demons out. And in my name, they shall do this and they shall do that. He's telling you. Because before then, we didn't know. We didn't know what Adam had did. All we know Adam messed up, I and mean, he had a flood, and he had to go through all these different kings. And Jesus said, No, 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 I can't. I didn't come to bring you to heaven. God sent Jesus from heaven, not to take us to heaven. But to reveal to us what he placed in earthen vessels upon the earth. He's like, let me show you who you are. Our identity Christ should be over for us. We know who we are in Christ. Do you not know your liturgies? Do you not know your gods? Man, he told them that twice. He read it from Psalms. It's in Psalms that he repeated. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, that word was established. And most people don't know what to do with that. Because most people just know God. And he's such a distant God. And he's a horrible guy in the Old Testament. But we love Jesus. But then you know why Jesus came? The government. It's only shows he came to bring us a whole new government, a whole new system. But we don't worry about who's in office, who's not. We can use a whole other system. God said it has nothing to do with your destiny. I already know your destiny. Matter of fact, I wrote the end from the beginning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. I'm out of time. I'm not out of the message. But if this uh, message has touched your heart, please go to our website from insideoutministry.org and please plant a seed that God can multiply, press down, shake it together, and run it over. We'll be back next week. Uh, pray God for you that you be safe. And remember, don't be distracted. You have a destiny. God already wrote your story. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen.